And we are back live at Unite Austin. Thank you for joining us on Facebook and YouTube, and thank you for all of the comments that are probably all positive, right? I don't know. I haven't read them. We're just so. going to assume they're great. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here uh, with David Calkins. You're here to talk about Super Lucky's Tale. So I tell am. us about it. Uh, so Super Lucky's Tale is um, a, a character action platformer. Um, that is coming soon for the Xbox family of devices, including the uh, Xbox One X that launches soon. Um, awesome. That also includes the Windows 10 store, so you can get it on your PC. Nice. Okay. And it is, it harkens back to the classic 90s platformers, mascot-led platformers. Um, there's a lot of nostalgia, um, but kind of told in a, a modern uh, way. And, um, you know, we're hoping that It'll delight folks who grew up playing those games like yeah. we did, and yeah. as yeah. well as a new generation of gamers. Yeah, I certainly felt that way. As you know, I got a chance to play yesterday. And yeah. Oh, yeah, it just, my childhood came rushing back to me, yeah. and I didn't yeah. want to leave. <laughs> and, and you never forget, you yeah. were good at it. So it's like I was riding good? a bicycle. The yeah. reflexes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I died within like five minutes, but the <laughs> second round I did a little better. I've seen a lot of play people play it over the summer, and you were you were above <laughs> average. <laughs> okay, that's good. So. so you refer to the gameplay style as a playground uh, platformer, playground platformer, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we mean by that is um, in some platforming games have kind of a uniform s level design throughout the entire thing, and we wanted to make something that had a lot of variety. Um, so essentially, uh, each level feels like a, a whole new experience, mm -hmm. almost like it's a collection of rides at a theme park. Nice. So. But yeah, that's, that's kind of what we were going for um, with that style. I mean, and that too is kind of harkening back to a, a certain era of platformers as well, like even like 2D platformers, where you would have you know, like stages or levels, ho however we put them, they were always very different. Like so, you know, every every game had an ice level. Every game yeah. had like a high tech level. It's kind of like you know, the, kind of the Sonic approach to some extent. Sure, um, and and I think that, that that's a good example. Uh, you know, in, in Sonic, the I love what they did with each level. Was this fully immersed world that fully realized and just had so much life in it. And I think that is certainly true of Super Lucky's Tale. But I think we went further than that. Um, 
and to the point where some levels are just like straight up side scrolling levels. Mm -hmm. Some levels are sprawling arenas. Uh, some levels are sort of intimate guided paths. We also have mini games. Um, there's on rails to pre precision challenges, side quests, um, and a bunch of characters and a story threaded throughout. So there's just all sorts of stuff to do in so the there, game. So this is a lot bigger than the first game, right? It is, yes. Um, so yeah, for those who don't know, uh, this is a sequel to uh, the first Luck it Lucky's Tale, which we made for the Oculus Rift that came out last year. And um, you know, if you are familiar with that game, you'll be happy to know that this is a much bigger game. It's a full-blown sequel. Mm -hmm. um, there's more depth, more levels, more characters, more story. Uh, it has more personality and style. Uh, just overall bigger in every way. So for people who don't have the Oculus, they don't <coughs> need to play the first Excuse game me. to follow along in Super Lucky's Tale, do they? No. Um, in fact, the first game, the story wasn't a big part of it. It was mostly about just the platforming gameplay. Yeah. Uh, whereas this time, we have a much bigger story, and so you will not be lost if you've never played the first one, which is kind of why we didn't call it Lucky's Tale 2, because yeah. we, you know, we wanted everyone to feel welcome. Yeah. And are you guys thinking about maybe taking Super Lucky's Tale for VR in the future? We, you know, we would love to make a VR version. Um, that's not our focus right now. We're, we're really focused on uh, our partnership with Microsoft mm -hmm. is fantastic in that they're going to allow us to share Lucky with millions of players yeah. across the world, you know, versus the smaller group that got to play the first VR. game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're really focusing on make it, making it just a really compelling flat screen experience that, you know, runs at 4K, uh, 60 hertz, looks great, plays great, has really tight controls. Um, and at some point down the road, fingers crossed, we'd love to make a, a VR version. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's pivot to Unity a little bit. What were, the, what were the things that you really took advantage of this time around? Um, which, which version did you make this in? I'm sorry, what's that? Which, Which version did you make this in? We made it in 5.6. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, we, we just missed the, the switch to 2017, um, but we are using that in one of our other projects called Star Child. But um, there was no choice for us when it came to what engine we would use to make Super Lucky's Tale. Um, it, it's what we used to make the first game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually the only engine we use at Playful. Um, and we just love how fast it allows us to you know, come up with ideas, experiment with new things, um, quickly iterate on them, and really that that allowed us to make you know the playground platforming style that we talked yeah. about of, of just having so much varieties because we had time to experiment with that stuff yeah. rapidly, iterate on it and, and polish it, and and it, it was great. So there's a couple of different things. Uh, I mean, there's so many ways that Unity is great. I could talk about a few of them if, if you guys yeah. are yeah. interested. You guys were using the progressive light mapper, right? That That is a big one, yes. Um, in fact, our animator Juan Martinez spoke at Unite LA last year mm -hmm. at the keynote. Oh, of course, yes. Um, he uh, he was one of the folks who uh, you know really struggled with the lighting in the first game and you know was not shy about sharing that feedback with Unity and, and um, through him and a f uh, I'm sure other folks, um, this feature, Progressive Light Mapper, came to be, and it is just such a fantastic upgrade. Um, you can actually, um, you can bake a level, the, the lighting of a level, yeah. um, and, and iterate it on it while it's baking, uh, versus just having to like push a button and wait for hours for it to be done. Yeah. Um, you can also just, like, if you don't like the way a, a certain level looks, you can just throw it all out, start from scratch, it, you know, in, in a fraction of the time. And that allowed us to really get each level just perfectly lit and just, just beautiful and crisp. Um, and I think we baked the entire game in a week, which is amazing. Um, the, the lighting of the entire game was done in a week? It was, it was. Uh, I think for the first wow. game, it was easily four times as long. Uh, wow. I'm not entirely sure, but... Um, yeah, and, and we could keep iterating on the lighting while it was doing that process, so that's great. Um, I think the other thing um, that that we took advantage of 
uh, and, and really helped us was being able to work on sub-scenes um, so that each discipline can work on a level in parallel. So you know, for, for instance, our, our sound guys have kind of their sound sub-scene. Okay. So they can work on all of the ambient sounds uh, oh, yeah. in each level. They're not locking out our animators or they're other all artists. They're checking in separately. Right, yeah, nice. so they're, they're checking into their own sub-scenes. Um, and then when it came time to merge all of those versions together, it was a fairly seamless process. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a great, fantastic feature. And then, you know, honestly, I think the, the thing we love most about Unity, um, maybe in the top five, is just how customizable it is and how rich of an ecosystem there is for yeah. additional tools and add-ons from the community um, it, that allow you to work in better and new ways. And the great thing about that stuff is you don't have to be a software engineer yeah. to, to use them. Our artists, our designers are constantly finding new tools out there that someone else has made um, and they can add them in and start working with them right away without constantly bugging the engineers. And if a tool isn't available, uh, it's not that hard to build your own tool within Unity. Unity gives you that customization, and we've done that on a number of occasions for this game. Awesome. Yeah. So I personally love the game. I can't wait to get it. How How can I get it? When can I get it? It comes out very soon. Okay. Uh, it comes out November 7th. All right. Uh, we just pressed the discs on Monday, so oh, but beautiful. you can also get it digitally. Okay. Uh, so. Um, in stores or digital, wherever. It's for all of the Xbox. It is for the Xbox, Xbox family. So Xbox that includes family. Xbox One. Okay. Um, Xbox One S, Xbox One X, the new one that's yeah. launching in uh, November 7th, the same day as our game. And also the Windows 10 store. And uh, it's just $29.99, so it's reasonably priced. It's and totally worth it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's something you can play with the whole family, and yeah. it's just it'll put a smile on your face. Yeah, it's a beautiful game. I love it. Well, thank thank you. you so much, David. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Thanks.